Good morning, folks. It is approximately 9.42 a.m. And I'm making a video. and got the TV on here. got my dog here. She says hello. And today I want you guys to see kind of like the garden a little bit or some, some of the flowers that I've got going. Um, hopefully I can make this video and not have too many issues. Um, so it looks like I, in my other video I was making, I was talking about like inner peace and stuff. And I love to garden, like this is one of the outlets that I have. And this is just like the front area. Um, and look at all these flowers, look at the bees. If you can see the bees pollinating these purple flowers, beautiful purple flowers that have been given to me by a friend of mine. And you know, they've been doing so awesome this year. Uh, at first, at first it didn't look like they were gonna do anything, um, like early spring, but then they got acclimate, acclimated to um, the environment and out here and next year I want to have them to be even more um, even more bushier I guess Let's see if we can catch this bee pollinating a little bit okay so we got these yellow ones all these different colors and actually um, what I wanted to talk about what I wanted to talk about was creating decoys um, so a decoy is something that may look like the original, um, but it really isn't. It's maybe a copy or a false copy. Now this, I, I have, um, yes, it's, I guess it's pretty country or whatever you want to call it, um, a stereotype, but I have a watermelon plant in the front here. And um, this was a decoy. And if you can see this pot here, um, this pot has a decoy plant. And the decoy actually decided to give out some little watermelon. And, um, you know, I wasn't, I didn't have any specific, uh, desire to, to, uh, um, I don't know, I guess, um, like I felt like if I, ha I had to create some type of decoy for this, um, so like on the other side of my plants here, um, I built this out and made, put some petunias down, you know, stuff like that. When you're not, when you're not in the, <clears throat> when you're not in the mood to, to be around people or maybe you, um, you need something for your own your own sanity your own sake um, gardening really helps out and it's one of my outlets for um, cultivating that inner peace and um, so that's the decoy the watermelon decoy but now if we go to the back you start to see the real watermelon and um, I started off here in this little bin and I ended up with three three watermelons and I'm in Ohio so some of y'all that are in the south I know that y'all got all that nice beautiful heat you can pretty much make whatever you need to make um, but here in Ohio this is what we got and um, next year though next year I plan to next year I plan to do even more so that I can get even more um, out of my harvest um, I've got some tomatoes here some cherry tomatoes and some uh, I think they're called plump tomatoes or some type of pear-shaped tomato um, there's a yellow squash here or a butternut squash. It's taking its time to come up, but it is coming up and um, Different types of tomatoes looks like there's a one that got a rogue one here and um, Take a look at the squash here if You can see that butternut squash nub here. I've got a couple of those nubs showing up. I wish that I had more of them um, But now that it's getting cold um, My my technique is gonna get a little bit better and um, I'm figuring out you know how they each operate and how they have their own I guess um, identities for growing and their own um, predicament so like um, even my dog so I also create decoys for my dog because she likes to tear up everything and um, it's really frustrating to continuously clean up after her and it doesn't solve a problem to discipline her or to harm her in any way so you know if she likes to tear up a cardboard box give her a cardboard box that's a decoy um, an excellent decoy for her to tear up and see she's chilling out right here waiting for us to come back inside and um, you know um, that way you're not actually ruining any of your um, you're not ruining any of your 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 belongings and the dog is happy as well so my other video got cut off and I'm gonna continue to talk about the whole decoy thing and um, so um, sorry I'm turning down this TV um, yeah, so um, like I said about the decoys for my dog, you can do the same thing with anything in life. Um, 
like in this a lot of a lot of people already some people already know this but it's just good you know even with people people that are um maybe you have people or a group of people that are harming you or irritating you or maybe it's even um someone that's close to you you may love them or have love for them but they're really being a little bit irritated and you kind of have to do what i did for my dog her name is lady and create a decoy um and that means a, a, a fake copy of something uh, maybe to satisfy or appease a person or a group of people um, but in reality they don't get the real the real um, the original copy or the original um, the original thing um, so I'm trying to think let's see let's see if I can find a, another example so let's say like someone uh, you have someone um, at work and they're bothering you and it's unnecessary like they're not um, they're not uh, they're purposefully doing it and you know that they're purposefully doing it because maybe they don't have anything else to do maybe they just feel like bothering you you can report them to HR or you could create a decoy um, figure out be creative figure out a way to give them what they need or slash want but at the same time it's not linked or attached to uh, you in any way or some or affecting you and your work environment so you create these decoys um, so I like the I like these concepts because for me I apply them to um, there's they become spiritual concepts to me um, and I just like to use them throughout life I guess and um, so yeah that's that's all about decoys um, let's see if I can find another example of making a decoy so I'll go back to the watermelon example um, for me like uh, I had like oh well maybe I look a certain way or I appear a certain way or to a stereotype because I like watermelon and I wanted to plant watermelon. Well, who cares? Like, that's my own self-esteem. If I care about what everybody thinks, then I'm not ever going to get anything that I desire done. And so for me, in order for me to, I said, okay, here's my imagined thought process. If I put something in the front yard and, you know, people, people will look at it. They see it. They see the flowers. They see the, even the watermelon plant. You know, those are judgments or those are thoughts towards the actions that you put out there. Well, that's exactly what I want my decoy to be. I want my decoy to be in front of people so that they can look at it um, and judge it. Um, so that they take in all of the energy of judgment, all of the energy of being um, ostracized or stereotyped, all of those things. They can receive all of that um, as the decoy. And then in reality, I put the real watermelon in the backyard because I know that's, you know, I still want to get some yield. And um, I don't know, maybe it's bad juju. Like... Um, some people are really superstitious and they believe like, um, I mean, you could say that these decoys are meant to receive bad juju. So you can have um, all types of items or material things set up to receive um, the bad energy or to receive the, the, the negative aspect of things that people put on um, with their own emotions or their own thought process. And those are the decoys. Um, but in reality, what's they are they're kind of like in place as like warriors or like soldiers, so that the real like kingdom or queendom around them is getting the benefit or the benefact uh, benefactory beneficiary. Um, I hope I'm using the right words, but um, and, um, I guess like it's kind of a little superstitious, but I think it's good. Like it's a part of my magic. It's a part of um, my own work. Um, is it, and that's creating decoys. Um, you can make, there's even um, in some like ancient, uh, um, ancient um, folklore about how like everybody's heard about how you take salt and you like dash it over you or something like that. Um, a friend of mine told me about how they do that um, from where he's from to like the spirits, the spirit world or the spirits have to come count like they're very meticulous. So uh, they have to, every time you dash like this on the left or the right of you. They have to come and count every last piece of salt that fell down and it stops them from like from harming you. Um, so whatever type of superstition or whatever makes you feel like inside that is helping or is going to help you, whether it be for protection, um, for money or abundance or just overall happiness for yourself. Like um, I don't really like when people start talking about um, like different statues and different things like all oh, those are idols. That's idol worship. Um, you're not supposed to worship these things. <laughs> Excuse me. It's about their symbolism, what they symbolize. Because their symbol is actually greater in the mind, in the subconscious mind, than the actual physical thing, which is another example of a decoy. So if I have, an, uh, if I have a statue of a Buddha or a, or a cross or a statue of an Egyptian uh, deity or a Native American deity or some type of spirits or something, to some very, very... Um, I guess, um, ignorant or naive person, 
um, to them it would make it, it would look like that you are worshiping idols. But in reality, you know that this is actually a decoy. It's actually about the symbol and what these idols symbolize. Um, they symbolize a spiritual truth. They symbolize a spiritual concept that you already know and you wish to continue to cultivate. Um, all of that is a continuous energy for your layout, for your work, for your magic. So that's in, that's the end of my five minute video. I wanted to continue because it kind of got cut off from um, the one that I was doing earlier. So thanks for watching and take care.